It's a joy to be with you on this Monday. Thank you for being part of a word of encouragement. Today, keeping on our Christmas theme, I'd like to go back to the Old Testament, one of the great prophecies of the coming of the Messiah. And that's found in the blessing that Balaam gave to Israel. Now, of course, you know the story. He was being paid to curse Israel, but he could not because God overpowered him. And instead, he blessed Israel in a great way, which, of course, brought great frustration to Barak. But in that wonderful blessing, we read in verse 17 of chapter 24, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheph. It's really a tremendous blessing to realize way back in the book of Numbers, uh, during the final days of the wilderness wanderings, that right there you had a very clear prophecy about the Lord Jesus. The fact that he was going to come out of Israel and as uh, the Genesis prophecy from Jacob says, he would be of Judah and he would have a scepter. In other words, he would be the king. Now we look today and we see all the different people that get into political power. We see all the people that have influence and you know it really is intimidating at times when you uh, understand in the human realm what they're able to do. But we need to continually remember that is the kingdom of darkness. It is not the kingdom of light that we have been transferred to. We have been translated to, as Colossians 1 says, the moment that we are saved. We are brought into the a new spiritual kingdom, and Jesus does rule in that. And when we are willing uh, to yield ourselves and pray instead of worrying, intercede, instead of getting distressed, do what God tells us to do, we begin to see the rulership of the Lord Jesus exercised to reach the kingdom of darkness. We've got to remember, no matter what kind of authority, no matter what kind of influence people have, that's all very temporary. It's transitory. God can move the heart of the king in just a moment. And so what makes the difference is for us to uh, keep in mind that we serve the king of kings. And if we're in fellowship with him and allow him to rule in us, then his rule can begin to be exercised in this world, defeating Satan, and we begin to see his purposes accomplished. You know, we often think, well, we can't make a difference. <clears throat> what's happening in the political realm? What's happening in our country? Well, yes, we can. If we will be men and women of God who knows what it means to pray and to get a hold of the throne and to allow this one who has the scepter and will rule in the millennium uh, the entire earth, but if we will allow ourselves to be under his leadership, he can do great things, and he can do those through us. We can make a difference in our corner of the world. Uh, Satan, as I've mentioned so many times, wants to discourage us and cause us to think it doesn't really matter what we do. We're insignificant. Well, humanly we are, but not as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. So he is the one that rules. The Savior is the head of the body. The Spirit of God indwells us. Let's remember, and let's let God do a glorious work through us for his glories and for the furtherance of his kingdom.